You've been stuck in traffic for almost an hour. Thousands of cars are slowly passing ahead. It's unbearably hot outside, and your air conditioner is broken. At this moment, you notice dark blue clouds forming in the sky. They're huge and moving fast. The clouds obscure the sun and begin to sparkle. But instead of rain, they release only lightning. Every second, the discharge hits the road. Lightning strikes cars and knocks out all electronics. You look out the window and see dark clouds spreading all over the city. After a few minutes, the strange thunderstorm ends and the clouds disperse as quickly as they appeared. Your car's engine stalls. You try to start it, but nothing helps. Then you hear the metal parts of the car ringing under the hood. You want to get out of the car to see what happened. But at this moment, a sedan to your left is pressed against your door. You feel a strong push. Someone crashes into your trunk behind you. The vehicle on the right pushes away from yours, as if some invisible thing was placed between you. From all sides, except the left part, you're pressed by cars. The door is blocked. You pull back the roof and stand on the seat. What's happening? The cars around are pressed against each other by an unknown force. Some vehicles are overturned and jump on the spot. You take out your phone to record this, but it's turned off. And the most fantastic thing is that there are several coins pressed to the back of your phone. Somehow, they got stuck there like magnets. And apparently, all the cars around are pressed against each other because of the same force. As you get out of your car, your phone falls out of your hands and sticks to the door like a magnet to the fridge. All the electronics in the city are malfunctioning. Traffic lights are flickering, as well as ad banners, and all metal objects are moving. Two garbage cans standing next to each other are shaking. A power line is magnetized to the light pole. The shop doors are closed with such force that they break the windows. The birds in the sky are going mad. Some of them are flying in random directions, others in circles. A strong wind rises and a hurricane begins. It's so strong that it tears off the roofs of houses and lifts some cars into the air. You find yourself in the epicenter of a disaster movie. Together with other people, you run to the supermarket. Before you get there, you fall. The ground is shaking under your feet. A strong earthquake begins. Houses are falling. Crevices are forming on the broken road. They're so deep, you nearly fall into one of them. You run in the other direction and jump through the broken glass of a library building. In the library, you head straight to the roof and see the earthquakes destroy the city. Suddenly, the hurricane ends. It's getting extremely quiet. All you can hear are the cries of gulls somewhere far away. You turn back and see a giant amount of water moving in your direction. The flood washes away cars and small houses, but the library was sturdy enough to withstand those waves. But destructions are just the beginning. Something really weird is about to happen. It starts to rain heavily and the sky turns pitch black. The rainstorm adds extra water to the flood. The rain ends quickly, the clouds disperse, and the sky turns so clear, you see the moon and stars. It can't be real, because it was noon five minutes ago, and all of a sudden, it's night. As you're gazing at the stars, you notice a green glow mixed with purple and yellow. Right now, you're watching the most beautiful aurora borealis in history. It shines and sparkles countless colors. Enchanted, you take a step back and approach the edge of the roof. A strong push from an earthquake makes you fall from the roof. The library you were hiding in is a four-story building. You fall for a couple of seconds, which is too long for this distance. But the coolest thing is that you don't get harmed. You feel the lightness of your body, make a jump up, and fly to the third floor of the building. At this moment, a strong wind blows and carries you away like a feather. You see hundreds of thousands of people flying into the sky. Cars, trees, parts of houses, everything is experiencing zero gravity. The planet is torn into pieces and each piece is hanging in the air. The water drops crash into your face. You're breathing freely, which means the Earth's atmosphere has not been destroyed. 
From the deep bowels of the planet, a deafening roar comes and permeates the entire surrounding space. And at this moment, you're asking yourself, how did this become possible after all metals became magnetic? To answer this question, you need to understand how magnetism works. Any material substance consists of molecules. Molecules are made of atoms. There's a nucleus inside the atom with electrons revolving around it. An electric current causes the movements of these electrons. In most substances, these particles move in different directions. But when the electrons start moving in one way, this makes the substance magnetic. In simple words, an electric current creates magnetism. Cobalt, nickel, and iron have many electrons moving in one direction, which makes these metals magnetic. But it's not enough to make them stick to your fridge. To become more magnetic, the metal needs to enter the area of another powerful magnet. This area is called a magnetic field. To make all metals magnetic, a huge magnet the size of a planet should fly near Earth. It doesn't sound real, but you already know that an electric current causes magnetism. When you were sitting in the car, the unusually powerful lightning bolts began to sparkle all over the planet. They were the cause of the disaster. All magnetic fields have north and south poles. If you put two magnets with the same sides to each other, they push off each other. If you put the northern part to the southern one, they attract. That's why some cars were pushed away and others were pressed to each other. Our planet also has these poles. Thanks to them, a compass works. Our entire planet is a sort of giant magnet too. The core consists of moving molten metals, mainly nickel and iron. Unusual lightning strikes made all metals magnetic on the surface. Also, it penetrated deep into the ground and charged the core with powerful energy, which caused an acceleration of the moving molten metals in one direction. The north and south poles of our planet help birds navigate in the air. The thunderstorm interrupted the ordinary work of the poles. That's why the birds were acting so weird. But the magnetic field doesn't only help to navigate. It creates a shield around our planet that repels solar particles and cosmic radiation. Sometimes, it manages to penetrate the upper atmosphere. There, they encounter various gases and create a glow, which is called the aurora borealis. After the magnetization of the Earth's core, the protective field becomes unstable, and the seepage points start moving around the planet. That's why you saw this phenomenon at noon, which felt like night since the day changed quickly. And this happened because of the accelerating planet's core. Millions of powerful lightning strikes made the inner metals move faster, which accelerated the rotation of the planet around its axis. The night came much earlier, but the morning will also begin faster. This acceleration triggered tsunamis and floods around the world. Chaos began in the Earth's atmosphere. Huge clouds form and pour thousands of tons of rain on the planet. The sea and ocean levels are rising in all parts of the world. The Earth's crust is falling apart. Gravity keeps us on the ground, but when the planet's rotation began to accelerate, the centrifugal force started to grow. Imagine you're on a huge carousel. It's rotating fast. If you don't hold on, you'll fly away. So now, our planet is the carousel. As it moves faster, you lose weight. All material objects become lighter and start literally flying. The Earth throws its contents out of the atmosphere. A global catastrophe is coming. Well, the good news is that these events are impossible. The honks pull you out of your daydreaming and you finally get out of the traffic jam. <laughs>